On September 28, 2022, two professional Rocket League players took the biggest risk the community has ever seen. The move they made was widely regarded by analysts, pros, and fans as the worst transfer in Rocket League esports history and generally doomed to fail. And honestly, it's not hard to see why. Because when you decide to uproot your life to move across the ocean to compete in the highest level of car soccer with an unproven team you've never played with before, you're going to draw some criticism. This is one of those stories that would make you think the league was rigged by a group of writers because it's just so far-fetched and so wildly different from how every other team in RLCS history was formed. But the biggest surprise of all was the end result. This is the story of Jack, Nolly, and a kid named Chronic who put their careers and personal lives on the line for one reason, to win an RLCS championship. Would it pay off? Let's put it this way. It had to. The 2022-2023 RLCS season was about to begin, and for many players, it represented a fresh start. This was especially true for Nolly and Jack, two English players who had seen some success the previous season, but had both come up short in different ways. Jack was coming off a season with Dignitas that had plenty of highs, but ended with quite a low. Club move on! Dignitas are out! Unfortunately, the team didn't end well. Bombed out of Worlds after the wild card in, in last place. Nolly had just been kicked from Carming Corp, despite making strides and getting decent finishes at lands. I, like, I am a little bit salty because uh, they removed me. They told me that they just had different plans, which is, which is fair. Both players were looking for a new team, and both players were running out of time with the end of the transfer window approaching rapidly. It was very stressful. I wasn't sure if I was even going to carry on competing because I didn't know if I was going to end up on a team at all. So when Nolly reached out to ask Jack if he wanted to team up and start looking for a third, Jack didn't hesitate. So I just agreed, without trying out. The two would begin their journey in the new season together. But this would be no ordinary season for the Europeans. Gen G Esports had come calling. I wanted something different, something fresh. But playing for the org would require a move to North America. Not just playing in a different league than they were used to, but also physically moving to another continent. Not to mention, they still needed a third player. Because of an unfortunately timed vacation, Jack was unable to fully dive into the search required to find the right teammate. We couldn't try out a third, we didn't have time. Left with no other choice, the duo made a huge gamble. That gamble was chronic. I've wanted to go pro since I was 13. I was kind of like considered an up and comer, but not on level of like first killer. Other pros have hyped him up, they just never really gave him too many chances. I had no idea who he was, so I went and watched some replays from Kronik of his final split last season, and it was just, it was like, this this kid's just incredible. Mechanically, very gifted, but also like, how intelligent he was. And we decided to just properly give him a shot without even trying out. Jack just DM me on Twitter be like, yo, we're planning on moving to NA, you'd be our top priority, would you be interested? It like, completely caught me off guard, because I didn't... Even though they were moving over, I didn't know they were like looking at me. And I was like, this is a really good opportunity. I'm ready to commit. The thing is, I didn't know what to expect fully out of Chronic. I, I had never spoken to him before we teamed. Chronic himself said he's really bad in tryouts, so he's really glad that we didn't try out as a team. And I just said, yeah, if you guys want to come over, I'd join right away. Needless to say, the move was controversial. People definitely thought that, like, this team was not going to work. People saying, oh, the move won't work out, the move won't work out, this is a terrible move, stuff like that. Downgrade for Nolly or whatever. Kind of expected it. Like, they were two pretty established players, and everyone considered me a pretty underwhelming third. We weren't no BDS, we weren't no much. Like, we weren't, like, the best players on the best teams in our own region. And Kronik was sort of unknown as well. So people thought it was a stupid move. There was one hate in specific, which was Rapid. You know, he, he, he sent me a message on Twitter. He was like, you know, if you manage to get top 10, I'll, I'll retire and go pro in Fortnite or something like that. Like people did not expect us to do well at all. It's demoralizing, but you have to have belief in yourself and the team and the preparation. I, would, I didn't really take it to heart what people said. I had faith in myself and had faith in them. I'm sure it would have been nice for Jack, Nolly, and Chronic to immediately shut down the doubters, burst onto the North American scene, and prove everyone wrong. But unfortunately, life isn't always nice. The team began their journey in the fall open qualifiers by getting swept by complexity, swept by phase, and 3-1 by NRG. It must have taken everything for the intrusive thoughts to be kept at bay at this point in these guys' minds. That was probably my worst performance ever, and, and it was really bad. It, it was pretty bad how we played that qualifier. Fire. I was pretty worried. It was quite scary. Um, I was like, okay, this move maybe isn't good. You start to doubt it, and it's like, this is scary. Maybe people were right, maybe I was wrong. What are we going to do? 
moving to the US, easily the biggest risk of my life. I've got no family out there. I've got no close friends. I know nobody. It's a whole different way of living. It's, it's such a big gamble. We didn't know how hard the NA competition was going to be. We didn't know if we'd, we'd suck and lose straight away. But there was still hope after day one. This was just the qualifiers for the first tournament of the season, and they could still make it in. They would just have to play another round instead of being automatically qualified like these teams. The next day, with their backs against the wall, the team rallied and reversed their results from the previous qualifier, winning three out of four series to ensure that they would indeed have a spot in the fall open. Finally made the regional, and that was a bit of a relief. It was a bit of a weight off our back. For Gen G, anxiety turned to relief. Relief. And relief turned to excellence. Daniel right down to Kronik, who's waiting. Kronik gets the opening goal. <laughs> Kronik, oh, great pass. Apparently, oh. Jack. Once we made the regional, it kind of just all clicked at once. And Jack got another off the kickoff. Here comes Genji off to the races. It seemed as if the fear and doubt had not caused them to wither, but grow, as they blazed their path all the way through the tournament into the grand final. But when they got there, FaZe Clan was waiting, and victory over this team was a little too much to ask. The defend, missed, feels the ball away, oh. puts one on target, now he gets beat! Boot, so great oh, defense, boy. great redirect! For reason, FaZe wants to score one more. First killer will finish the fall open with an exclamation point. They are the fall kings right now. Genji had lost to FaZe Clan in the grand final of their first North American event. We got completely outclassed. They were just better than us in individuals and team play. However, when all the team wanted was to be there, perhaps second place was good enough. We were just so ecstatic with getting second. Like, if we lost, we're still in a fantastic position to make the major. It helped us so much getting that second place in the first regional. Two weeks later, in the second tournament of the season, the Fall Cup, the attitude of good enough no longer applied for Genji. They had proven they belonged in North America with their first tournament, but now they wanted more. Mixed results on day one meant they had a low seed for the playoffs in the last days of the event, which means they had to play the team they could not beat, FaZe Clan. But this time, things were different. Oh, first killer couldn't get there! No, he will make a new level of confidence and determination emerged, and at last, Gen G had taken down its foe. And when they beat SSG in the semifinal, it really felt like everything was coming together. But it's never that easy in Rocket League. We came into the final quite slow. Scores! And version one cuts down Gen G! Version one had other plans and spoiled Jack, Nolly, and Chronic's day. We just couldn't pull it through. Genji now had two second place finishes in North American tournaments. But this time, the feeling hanging over the team was very different. So this one hurt. We really wanted to win. We were so close to beating them. We lost in a game seven overtime. It hurt, yeah. It definitely hurt a lot. It sucked, honestly. I was pretty heartbroken after that loss. We saw a few, a few tweets, a few Reddit posts about it was like uh, choking and not being able to win an event because we've got two top twos. Yeah, we definitely took it personally. I could, I could sit here and say that things don't affect me, what people say don't affect me, but I don't care to admit that I get very affected by what people say and think. I'm absolutely fine to admit that because it's not a bad thing as long as you manage it well. It doesn't get to me where it breaks me or I want to lash out. It's just purely like you've said something and I'm going to prove you wrong. They would have one more tournament in the season. The Fall Invitational was up next. In the two weeks leading up to the Fall Invitational, Gen G worked harder than ever. In some ways, their bitter second place finish in the previous event had been a blessing in disguise, providing even more motivation for the young team to prove the doubters wrong. It made us really grind. I'm happy we lost that final because it's made us really grind for the third regional. If anything, it made us more hungry. That honestly just motivated me even more because I really wanted to get that third regional win. When the day of the last tournament arrived, the team was ready. And it showed. And Gen G take down version one. This has been dominant from Gen G. It's difficult once more, but there's no more time on the clock. Gen G ramps at North America. Your fall invitation. Gen G had finally gone all the way, beat every North American team in historic fashion, and secured the number one seed in the region. And yet, even after an accomplishment like that, their biggest challenge was yet to come. Winning online is one thing, 
But traveling to a new location, getting up on the stage, facing your opponent 20 feet away, and winning in front of a crowd is another thing. Gen G had, in many ways, come so far, but they still had so many more doubts to overcome. It was time for the Fall Major, where all the best teams from each region in the world would come together to find out who was the best. Gen G would now not just be facing the best teams from North America, but the world, including the world that Jack and Nolly had left behind, the monolith that is European Rocket League. So yeah, we were, we were very confident going into it but there were still doubts in our heads and in our minds that you know things could go wrong nobody expected us to win people always say like you know jack doesn't perform on land um chronic is not going to perform because he's new you know we had natural doubts whether we could play well on land as the team's most outspoken and most active content creator jack felt the pressure or at least was more aware of the pressure than anyone. On top of that, Jack felt the pressure of going 0 for 2 in his previous LAN experiences. People say, and, and to be honest, it was true that I'd never really played well on LAN before, and that was going again into my own head. So I had to overcome those little kind of you know, mental factors for myself to play well on LAN. But there was no hiding from the fact that their biggest risk of all was totally new to the LAN world. Chronic had barely played in RLCS, much less at a LAN. I kind of had a lot of pressure on me as like the new kid. I wanted to perform with them because I was obviously kind of like the odd one out. They were already two established pros. They'd been at LANs, they were at Worlds. So imagine how this young team felt when on day one, they went cold. Oh, maybe that Ooh! Ooh! Goes in on the crossbar and it goes one nil oxygen. This one is only finishing now. We're reaching zero seconds, but in truth, there's not, they can't quite sink that flip reset. It's been over for a very long time. It was embarrassing. They have Joris on that team, Jorius, my former teammate. Archie was my friend. You really want to beat your friends. You really want to beat your former teammates. That's always the case. It wasn't a close series at all. We got completely outclassed. Oxygen had outscored Gen G 13 to 1. Nearly a perfect sweep. In their entire journey so far, this was the team's lowest point. Jack, Nolly, and Chronic had been swept by Jack's former teammate, and it may have felt, in that moment, like it was all a huge mistake. We looked really bad, I looked really bad, and I was like, maybe I can't play well on LAN, maybe everyone's right. I was in my own head completely after the series, we were all were. It was a super down time for the team. It's amazing how you can have success after success after success, yet one failure at a LAN can feel like it was all for nothing. But it's in those moments that you find out who you really are. We had to fix it up. It's simple as that, you have to, else you're gonna lose, you're gonna regret it. So when the team woke up on the last day of the tournament and found themselves in the final playoff bracket, they were ready to discover for themselves what they were really made of. Nolly and Chronic woke up with a really good mindset, especially Chronic. I was still quite down the following day, but they picked me up and made sure I was okay. In the next series, I played you know, really well and we did as a team too. It's not just about playing the game. Mentality takes up about 80%. It wasn't easy, but Nolly, Jack, and Chronic blocked out the uncertainty and doubt and took control of their own fate that day. I woke up on the final day and I was like, we're winning this event. We're not losing. I don't feel as losing to any team today. As they sat up on that stage, taking down elite team after elite team on Championship Sunday, propelling them to a grand final, they were no longer thinking about how far they'd come, how many ups and downs they'd had, and they were certainly no longer thinking about the doubters. A whole lot of EU pros right this weekend have said they left. They ran away from Europe because they can't compete here. They're trying to prove everybody wrong by winning on EU style. In that moment, they focused purely on themselves and what they needed to do to accomplish their goal. The same for Gen G. Oh, what a pass! Oh, my goal! It didn't feel crazy. When that goal went in, I didn't like get nervous. It felt like I was still grounded and I could focus on the next four seconds to end the series off. Four seconds left! This felt just natural, even on the biggest stage in the world that I'd ever been on. I was working so hard for years. I got up, it started like, I can't believe we did it, right? In that moment, so many feelings come through. To, to actually win a major, to be like, okay, my dreams of, of you know, being, being the best in the world is, is happening now. It was completely a blur. I tried to, I tried to like ground myself and enjoy the moment. Felt not half of the world, honestly. Nobody thought we were gonna take it. If it didn't work out, you know, maybe I'd be in a different situation right now. I might be, you know, packing my bags and, and 
coming back to Europe, Jack really helped. I always had someone to talk to, but if I didn't, I don't think I would have survived in, uh, in NA. They taught me how to play the game. It's been great. <laughs> he just needed two players who had played at Worlds to show that out of him. Most of it does come down to how you are as a person and how you've been brought up over the years. Being toxic gets you nowhere. Yeah, it's pretty funny to go look back and all the doubters and just know that we made it. It's beyond anything I could last for. I think we can all learn something from this young team, because on that day, they showed us what it means to be a champion. If you enjoyed this Rocket League story, you might also like my video on the best save in Rocket League history. And of course, make sure to subscribe for more content coming soon. I'm Sunless Khan. Thanks for watching.